Hello guys, I'm happy that I have here my guest Ursula Wolpe from Fox and Happy Blocks. And Ursula, thank you for coming and please introduce yourself a little bit. Thank you, George, for having me. Well, so put very shortly, I've been active in the IT space for the last 15 years. I started at IBM with my dual studies, then went into consulting but found it a little bit boring that as a junior consultant, I couldn't decide anything by myself. So, um, and yeah, it would have, I don't know, uh, lasted at least 10 years until I would have been into the position where I could make decisions by myself. So I decided to change into sales within IBM. And then, yeah, I was able to be an intrapreneur. So an intrapreneur within IBM and started to, Closed my first deals very successfully. Then I moved to Salesforce, did this for over five years, selling um, cloud solutions to German Mittelstand, which was not easy in 2015 because most people were still thinking, ah, no, I, I prefer to have my data in my, uh, in my own house, so to speak. So I'm already experienced to having a kind of, um, um, uh, resistance from potential customers. And I guess it's the same nowadays with Web3. Um, but yeah, to make it short, um, was helping my customers at Salesforce to put their customer into the center of everything they do. And this is what I also love about Web3, that it's basically being more emotionally involved with your customers, making real fans out of your customers, for example whether you are a B2B or B2C brand. And I've always dreamt of having my own IT consultancy. You know, when I was sitting at Salesforce, especially with my customers and we were having a workshop, I always thought, ah, that would be nice to have my own IT consulting business. And as uh, yeah, almost one year ago, I started to fall deeply into the Web3 rabbit hole. I now can combine both of my passions, IT consulting and also um, Web3. And yeah, this is where I'm standing today that I'm in the middle of co-founding my own business consultancy with my co-founder, Dr. Susong Fröhlich. And we called our, or will call our consulting business Box and Happy Blocks because my surname, Volpe, is Italian and means fox. And Fröhlich, of my co-founder, the surname of my co-founder, is happy in English. And blocks, because blockchain is the backbone of Web3. It wouldn't be possible without um, blockchain. I also have That's a very already, good idea. Also. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you. It was just, yeah, you know, uh, how, sh how should we call our company? Maybe let's take this name and yeah, don't invest any more energy. Great. It's also great to have ladies in the industry. There are not yeah, many ladies yeah. in the industry. And uh, you are used working with uh, a lot of resistance. And can you tell us a little bit if this is an advantage, if you have uh, ladies in the company or with mixed teams or mm -hmm. only ladies, um, can you give there a recommendation for our guests? Yeah, so um, first of all, um, this is a really nice question because it also has to do with my uh, second company I already founded, which is Pink Fox Ventures. And with this, I invest my own money into startups. It's a, a vehicle for my business angel investments. And one hard fact for me is that I only invest into teams with at least one female co-founder. And so from my, um, because yeah, there are a lot of reasons why, but I want to support uh, other females founding their own business. And um, so also from my own experience, because as a woman in IT, I'm used to being the only woman in the room. And I had many negative encounters. So for example, I recall one meeting with a customer. It was a new customer. And the IT man, I brought one of my colleagues with me who just started one week ago. And the IT, uh, the CIO was only talking to my colleague, although he knew he just started one week ago and I was uh, there at Salesforce over four years at the time. And yeah, so this is um, uh, something not so good. So I guess um, if you have mixed teams, you, um, 
you make also men be more comfortable working with women. So maybe more women don't fall into the situation so often anymore that they are just ignored because they are a woman. Yeah? You know, this is uh, not a really nice experience. And um, there are also, so from a startup uh, perspective, there are also some studies. The numbers differ a little bit, but overall, I guess the message is clear that mixed teams are more successful than male only teams, for example. Um, and I, um, there's one study that's always um, being mentioned for every um, dollar invested into a women or every dollar invested into a startup, women co-founded startups on average make 78 cents out of it. Of course, it's less because startup investments is a high risk investment and many startups fail within the first three years. And the all male teams, they only make 31 cent. So it's 31 all male versus 78 cent mix or female only teams. Uh, the study didn't differ here between female only or mixed teams, but this is huge, you know, and for when investing into startups, it's not charity that, for example, also I do by investing into female co-founded startups. It's a real business case behind it. So we heard now that it is a big financial advantage when you have mixed teams. So that's a financial advantage. That's much better for startups if they are mixed. And do you know why there is so you're used to work with resistance. Do you know why there is so much resistance having mixed teams? Are there not enough women in the business or do you know what's going on? I guess it, um, oh, that, <laughs> I, I could think of a lot of uh, reasons for that. So for example, there are a lot of boys only clubs. If you look, for example, at Switzerland, the military is a huge, opportunity for men to build lifelong networks. Women don't have this kind of network because yeah, they, they uh, don't have um, military service. Or so wh what I want to say is that most men, if they want to found a startup, they don't think about, uh, do I know a woman who I can found this startup with? Uh, they think about who is closest to them, who is, um, most similar to them, uh, to them, for example. And there are a lot of, so I, for example, as a business angel would never invest into a startup where everybody is coming from the same university because that's too, too similar as a background. Um, I prefer to have mixed teams, not only in terms of gender, but also in terms of experience, skills and so on. And yeah, so, uh, if, somebody is listening here and is a man and wants to found his own startup, please think about if you know any women who might be interested in founding or co-founding the startup with you. On the other hand, I guess it's also hard for women to found startups because there, yeah, there are also a, different, a lot of different numbers. One, one number is that only 2% of the worldwide capital that venture capital firms invest into female co-founded startups um, goes to female co-founded startups, meaning 98% goes to male only startup teams. And so there's a huge discrepancy in terms of funding as well. So even have, if, if women have the courage and want to found a startup, it's so hard for, or so much harder for them to find investors. This is also a big hurdle they all have to take. And then of course our biology, because uh, we, we still need to get the babies, men can do this. Uh, so there's always a break. And for me personally, um, I didn't mention this before, but I was staying at home for the last uh, two to three years because I got two, two children. And in a corporate world, especially in Switzerland, it's awful because women face discrimination. We, we need to apologize ourselves because why do you still work? <laughs> why don't you stay at home? 
And uh, yeah, it's even not a question that this question is rude because it's up to me what I want to do. And my husband never get these kinds of questions. On the other hand, he's even worshipped a little bit that he's managing children and his job. Yeah, you know, so there's also um, hard for women to take the courage and found their own startup. So for my, for me, it was a um, great break because I finally found the courage to found my own startup and not even one at the time being even two. So uh, it's also a huge potential for combining um, yeah, the household, the children and work because I'm really flexible. So it was a very good situation for you to go deep into yourself mm -hmm. and to get to know what you want to do. And yeah. then you founded a company and now you're in Web3. What is so interesting for you in Web3? Uh, so the most interesting part at the moment is for me that I'm one of the very early adopters because people who are already in the space really tend to forget that we are so, so early. And for example, my co-founder and I, we already had our first uh, four weeks online course about Web3. And before this, we were uh, did a short survey with our friends and so on and former colleagues. And so many of them said us, I don't know what Web3 is about and I don't even want to know. <laughs> so um, we are still early, but I like to compare it to I don't know. Imagine in 1998, you would have founded an internet company. Everybody would have said, ah, crazy, why are you doing this? And I think it's the same with Web3 at the moment, because we are so early that um, only those in deeply into the industry understand why it's here to stay and why it will change businesses, why it also will have socioeconomical um, consequences in the future that, yeah, uh, blockchain technology. Uh, so for those who don't know what Web3 is, it's basically about blockchain. So everything is immutable and cannot be deleted and so on. And on the other hand, it's also about ownership because at the moment, I'd like to take the example of social media. I've heard it a lot that a Twitter from one second to the other, the account got uh, deleted or uh, on Facebook or wherever. And in uh, Web3 social media, there, there's not, there's, as we are so early, there's not the uh, Web3 uh, social media platform yet. But this will change. And For sure. Web3 gives a real big potential, potential and opportunity. And even not Elon Musk can delete the recording from the blockchain. That's yeah. not possible. And as you told us now, we are really at the beginning and, and we're on a, on a, yeah, on the way to a great future. And I remember the words in 1900, anything, we don't need internet. Yeah. And now everybody needs it. And I'm sure that it will be the same with web three and with your company, uh, Fox and happy blocks. You, uh, your aim is to help companies on their way to Web3? Yes. Uh, so what we also found out is that those who are interested in Web3, they don't have the time to invest because in Web3, you first hand need to invest a lot of hours to understand what it is about. I mean, I've been into the space for one year now and I still learn everything, uh, anything new every day. That's great. So really from beginning, you take them by the hand and guide them to Web3. Yes, definitely. And of course, this all starts with Web3 education, because I'm totally convinced that you also can or only can delegate those tasks which you have our understanding of. So first of all, we also would start with education. And yeah, so for example, um, if I uh, if I were about to get help with social media, but I wouldn't even know what a hashtag is, for example, would 
anybody could tell me anything. So a basic understanding needs to be there. So this is also why we decided to start with um, education. Thank you, Ursula, for your interview. It was a pleasure to have you here and to give a guide to, to our listeners. And uh, Ursula, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you too. And if I may, if you have any or anybody male is listening at the moment, what about reaching out to your spouse, to your friends or girlfriend and asking her if she would be interested to learn more about Web3? Because I see a lot of potential also for usually more uh, women jobs, for, for example, in marketing and so on. This is a crucial part of every Web3 project. And uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a huge potential also for women to follow their passion. But in Web3, so tech-related jobs are always, well, at the moment, not so much, but usually really secure. So just try, if you are already in Web3, to find a woman in your nearer circle and pull her into Web3 as well. That's very good. Thank you very much, Ursula. Thank you too. Bye. Bye.